and welcome back to No Kidding News. I'm Bruno and I'm here to keep you informed but also engaged. Last week we started looking at one of the most important topics of our time, climate change. This week we'll be talking about what individuals, industries and companies can do to help. Let's start with why individuals need to care about their environmental footprints. Well, Every one of us has a carbon footprint, which means how much carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere because of the things we do. Our global population is growing rapidly, and the more it grows, the larger our collective carbon footprint becomes. The United Nations has estimated that our population will increase to 9.7 billion by 2050, and a group of 11,000 scientists recently conducted a study which found that we need to stabilise our population growth in order to cut carbon emissions. In other words, they say that people need to have fewer babies, but this is hugely controversial. Instead, some people argue that it's not about population growth, but about every individual reducing their carbon footprint. Let's look at three key ways you can reduce your impact today. Number one. Scientists have found that transport is responsible for 34% of a household's carbon footprint in high-income countries like the UK. Walk, ride a bike or take public transport if possible. Try to take one flight this year, which should be hard in the middle of COVID-19. Number two, heating is responsible for 21% of households' carbon footprint. This can be helped by turning down the heating and putting on a jumper building better insulated housing, and changing to a low-carbon heated system. Number three, UN experts have reported that if more of us switch to a plant-based diet, we could feed a greater number of people using less land, with less negative environmental consequences. A study by Oxford University found that we could reduce greenhouse gas emissions from food production by 49%, if we all get out meat and dairy. Again, another very controversial topic. Although you don't have to change everything about your life, start thinking about small ways that you can reduce your carbon footprint. Now, let's take a closer look at what a major industry, fashion, is doing to reduce their carbon footprint. You might be asking, how much impact do the clothes I'm wearing really have on the planet? The answer is, a lot more than you think. Let's go to Minnie for some more information. Hi Bruno, I think that this is a really brilliant topic to talk about, as the fashion industry is amazing, and we really couldn't live without it. However, it is also surprisingly destructive. I didn't realise all the ways that the fashion industry contributes to polluting the planet before I began research for this podcast. Fact! Fashion produces more CO2 per year than international flights and maritime shipping combined. The brilliant thing about the fashion industry is that it has become more inclusive. There are so many different designers catering for every shape and style, and the great range of prices makes clothing available to everyone. However, there are some downfalls to this. Firstly, Cheap clothing is mostly made by people in poorer countries and in factories. They often work long hours in bad working conditions and for very little pay. Often, children are involved in creating fine embroidery for almost no pay. Instead, it is the manufacturers and the fashion companies that reap the real rewards. Fact, 152 million children are engaged in child labour. Another problem is that cheap clothes mean that most of the time they aren't the best quality. People tend to think of cheap clothes as disposable, wearing them only once before chucking them away. So they end up in landfill, which is basically a massive rubbish dump. Fact, one truck full of clothing goes to landfill every second. No kidding. The fashion industry is one of the biggest polluters on our planet. How come? Well, some materials such as cotton and wool are able to decompose and rot away. However, some materials can't, such as nylon and polyester. They are made of plastic and are not eco-friendly at all. We also have the problem that although cotton is biodegradable and a natural fibre, it takes more than 10 
thousand liters of water to make one cotton t-shirt. I mean, that's a lot. Then there are factories that pollute the air. All clothing factories produce tons of carbon dioxide, which heats up the earth and makes the climate change. Factories need to look at becoming carbon neutral, using different energy sources such as wind turbines and solar energy. I love colourful clothing. However, the dyeing process is very water intensive, as well as releasing harmful chemicals into the water table. Denim is one of the biggest offenders. Fact, the fashion industry is responsible for 30% of the microplastics in the ocean. Fast fashion chains overproduce cheap clothing and then put the excess into landfill. Designer houses burn excess product instead of selling it at a discount price because they don't want to devalue their clothing. This also pollutes the environment. Companies produce too much and we buy too much without caring about the damage this does to our environment. Something has to change. Fact. One third of parents have thrown away perfectly wearable outgrown baby clothes because they didn't know what else to do with them. But research has shown that if we extend the life of clothes by just three months, it could reduce the UK's carbon footprint by around 10%. Wow, I didn't realise it had such a serious effect. Is the fashion industry really doing enough to tackle climate change? How could they improve further? Recently, things have started to change. One of the biggest champions of sustainability is British designer Stella McCartney. In 2018, she partnered with the United Nations on a sustainable fashion charter, like a pledge, detailing 16 commitments for the industry to significantly reduce its impact on climate. New labels need to take a strong, sustainable view. They are doing this in lots of small ways, such as using dead stock material. This is material that is regarded as offcuts or excess rolls that have been discontinued. They are making small runs of pre-ordered items. Normally, a store makes hundreds of the same t-shirt or dress. Then, if they don't sell, they go on sale. Then, if they're still not bought, they end up in landfill. Instead, designers like Wise London are producing small collections so that what is bought is made and nothing more. Others are looking into their whole production chains. Like the French fashion brand Cezanne, they are looking at factory pollution, natural dyes, and also environmentally friendly packaging and transportation across the globe. Fact. Currently, less than 1% of the material used to produce clothing is recycled into new clothing. The high street company, H&M, has a brilliant idea where they have boxes in every shop where you can donate any brand of clothing. Then, they reuse these clothes. H&M also have a collaboration with the company Spindye. Together, they take materials such as polyester saving it from landfill, and add colour pigments. These coloured fibres are spun together to make new yarn. Some companies, like the new British fashion label Albre, are developing new fabrics made from Eco Vero Viscose, created from renewable wood sources. Second hand or vintage is the perfect way to say sustainable too. You can sell and buy clothing and accessories on sites such as Vinted, or even rent a wardrobe or a special outfit from My Wardrobe HQ. Consumers, that's you and me, are becoming more educated and are asking more questions. It doesn't mean we should stop buying clothes. It just means we need people to come together to find a solution and take responsibility. I believe it's up to us as consumers to voice our concerns and vote with our wallet. We should support brands that are taking an environmental stand and make the big fashion brands from high street chains to designer labels take responsibility and ownership for their actions. Things are starting to change, but we have to keep up the pressure and make sure these changes are for good.
Wow, the goals are on fire today. No kidding. Thank you, Minnie from Penbridge Hall and Bella from Belleville Primary School for showing us that sustainable fashion is the new fashion. After walking down the catwalk, next episode, we will be heading down the highway to take a closer look at the motor industry. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to check out our website, nokiddingnews.com. You can also follow us on YouTube and many other major platforms. Until then, take care.